Hi everyone and welcome to this super exciting video in which I'll show you how to make your own old style tunnel portals like this. I'll start by making a tunnel portal with very realistic brick details using expanded polystyrene foam. The foam is very easy to work with, which is great, but isn't really durable enough for long term installation on a layout. So I'll then use the foam tunnel portal to make a silicon mold. That will allow me to cast as many tunnel portals as I want using plaster, which is much more durable than foam. I will also show you a few different ways of painting the tunnel portals that looks very realistic. As a bonus, at the end of the video I'll also show you another method of making tunnel portals that's much easier and faster, but doesn't look as realistic to me. Before I start I have to say this video was inspired by a video from Auckland of Sweden and this video from Luke Tauen. Links to their channels in the description. This video took around 400 hours to make, so I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like. And maybe subscribe if you are enjoying this video so far. But anyway, let's get started. To get started, you'll need some sort of foam. This is expanded polystyrene foam I'm using. First, the foam gets sliced into 1cm thick sheets using a very simple hot wire foam cutter that I built. If you don't want to build a foam cutter, you can always try to find the foam already in the right thickness. Then some very basic tools are used to cut the tunnel portal out of the foam. This will be a single line tunnel portal in HO scale. This is the dimensions. Now the nice thing about making your own tunnel portals is you can make any custom tunnel portal for a specific area on your layout. In situations like this that you want the best cleanest cuts possible, it's a good idea to use a brand new sharp knife blade. I also make some side walls to have the option to use them if I want to, and also to show you how to make them. They are all made using the same foam. This is the dimensions for the side walls. Now with that done, it's time to make a bunch of bricks. Some plastic sheets are used as spacers in the foam cutter so that it cuts the foam to about 3 to 4 mm thick sheets like this. Then the foam sheets are cut into strips. Once that's done, the spices are removed and I just grab a bunch of foam strips, hold them vertically and simply cut a few hundred bricks like this. The hot wire foam cutter makes it very fast and easy. Some of the bricks were cut a bit bigger and some a bit smaller than the rest to get some variation and to make the wall look a bit more interesting. Next I cut some bigger bricks for the arch, if that's what it's called. But anyway you can be creative and do whatever you want. During this process I was looking a lot at some reference photos of real tunnel portals to get the dimensions and sizes and stuff right. The bricks get glued on using standard PVA wood glue.
Once the arch is done you can start the tedious process of gluing each brick on. Now it takes some time but it's definitely worth the effort. And if you put on some music while doing it, it's actually not too bad and you'll be done before you know it. You can use some tweezers to pick the bricks up and place them in the right spot, but I prefer to use the sharp tip of my hobby knife. Once the glue has dried, I cut the edges clean. And the same process is repeated for both of the side walls. Then the edges of both side walls gets cut to an angle of 45 degrees like this. Now I want your feedback on something. The last few days I have been thinking about creating a Discord server to help grow the model railroading community. Please let me know what do you think, I would love to get your feedback. I also cut in some details at the top of the tunnel portal to make it look a bit more interesting. For the next step I use some pens to temporarily hold them together, then some plaster get mixed to a relatively thin consistency and gets painted over the entire tunnel portal to fill in the gaps between the bricks and to give the bricks some texture. Once the plaster has dried completely, the pens are removed and each part gets stuck down onto a piece of paper using a small amount of glue tag or prestic as we like to call it here in South Africa. Then some non-stick spray used for baking gets sprayed from all angles onto the tunnel portals and side walls. This will prevent the silicone that will be used to make the mold from sticking to the foam. Just make sure you do this in a well ventilated area. You don't want to breathe this stuff. I have found a very light spray is enough to get the job done. 
just make sure you don't mess a spot. Before I start applying the silicone, I get some soapy water ready. You'll see why in just a minute. When applying the silicone, you want to make the sides of the mold about 6 to 10 mm thick. To prevent the silicone mold from bulging out while the plaster is being poured and whilst it dries. If I touch the silicone, it will immediately stick to my finger. So to prevent that, I dip my finger in the soapy water and that allows me to smooth the silicone out very nicely. Whilst doing this, I also try to get the silicone in between the bricks. To make the mold on the outside look nice and smooth, you can smooth it out using a putty knife that also gets dipped into the soapy water. You just have to be relatively quick. In my experience you have about 10 minutes to work with the silicone. This will take a lot of silicone. Luckily it's much cheaper than latex rubber. And the process is simply repeated for both sidewalls and the tunnel portal itself. Once you're done, let it dry for about 2 days so that the silicone in between the bricks can dry completely. Now for the exciting part, releasing the molds. The mold should release quite easily like this. Then some unwanted silicone gets cut away. Now if your mold doesn't stand level like this, the same as mine, don't worry you can just apply some more silicone to the bottom of the mold and put them level on a piece of paper that was also sprayed with the baking spray. Then I put the polystyrene back in to make sure the mold stay in the right position whilst drying. Once the silicone is dry the paper gets removed and you have a very nice flat surface on the underside of the mold. And it will stand level so that the plaster doesn't leak out. Now let's find out if it works. I'll be using normal plaster of Paris. I have to say I'm not very good at mixing plaster of Paris. I always end up getting a lot of bubbles in my castings. Let me know if you have some tips to avoid bubbles in the plaster. If you mix too much plaster, you can always use it in some of the rock molds I showed you how to make in my previous video. After about an hour, the plaster should be hard enough to release them from the molds, and you'll be able to cast more if you want. Before you start painting, it's a good idea to let the plaster dry completely. Now let's get started painting. This is method number one. I start by mixing some black and very light brown and add some water to make a wash. Now I wasn't happy with the wash, so I played around with the ratios and added more paints and water till I was happy. 
This will be the base color. It gets painted over the whole tunnel portal and the side walls. This dried a bit darker than I expected, so I just added some more very light brown to the wash and painted it again. Next, I paint some individual bricks different shades of brown using a fine brush. Once that's dry, a very dark wash is applied over everything and let to dry. Once the paint has dried, to get rid of that plasticky paint look, I use some fine sifted soil from the garden and just brush it over everything using a big soft brush. This is a very subtle effect, but it just adds a touch more realism. This is an old style tunnel portal, so I thought it would look nice to add some smoke effects that's caused by steam locomotives. This is simply done by dry brushing on some dark brown, almost black color. and I think it turned out looking not too bad. Let me know what do you think. Now method number 2 of painting, and I like this one a lot, it's my favorite. First, a light brownish grey wash with a lot of water gets applied over everything. Then the same as the other one, I paint some individual bricks some different shades of brown and grey, which is also diluted with water. Then I make a dark brown almost black wash which also gets applied over everything. Once done some excess wash is removed with the paper towel. And let it dry for about 5 minutes. Then I add some water and brush it like this. This removes some of the paint from the bricks and only leaves the dark wash in between the bricks. And I also just added the same smoke weathering effect that was done with the previous one. At the beginning of this video I promised a bonus method of making tunnel portals that's much easier and faster. So let me show you how that's done. Now to be clear this is basically a copy of what Marklin of Sweden did in his video just with different foam and another painting method. I start by cutting the tunnel portal out of the same 1cm thick sheets of expanded polystyrene foam that was cut using the hot wire foam cutter. I kept the dimensions the same for this one. The difference is I don't glue the individual bricks on, they get engraved into the foam itself using a putty knife and a screwdriver. And I always start with the arch and then do the rest of the bricks. Thank you. 
Then I carefully cut the arch out using a hobby knife. because it will be glued back in sticking a bit out like this. And then it also gets painted with plaster. and let the plaster dry before painting. This gets painted basically the same way as the other tunnel portals, but you can be creative and do your own thing. If you want more detail about this specific method of making tunnel portals, go watch the video from Auckland of Sweden on his channel. And this is the end result of everything that was created in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.